Jesus, I'm just so grateful and I'm so thankful to be in the body, in the house this morning, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that the words that come out of my mouth would be completely guided by you, Lord Jesus, that everything that we say, that everything that we do, that every worship song we sing, that every single sermon that is given at this church would be simply to magnify and glorify the name above every other name, Father. I pray that today that the message would convict our hearts and cause us to change, Father, for your glory and to make you known. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody says, we're in this one-off message today titled, The Power of Intentionality. Next week, we're going to start talking about Thanksgiving, and we're going to be talking about, uh, yeah, believe it or not, we're in November, um, coming up next week, and we're going to be getting into Thanksgiving, and the colors are going to change, and we're going to have the fall backgrounds and everything, and today, in our schedule, they allotted for me to have one Sunday where I can talk about whatever I want, and as I was praying throughout last week, um, if you remember, last week was prayer and fast. How many of you guys joined us in that? Yeah, that was an amazing time. God was doing some tremendous things. And through that whole week, God was teaching me something as I was praying, as I was fasting, as I was watching more sermons, as I was reading the Bible more and, and kind of just making an intentional effort to be with God. He was teaching me the power of intentionality. And I don't know about you, but during prayer and fasting week, it seems as though the enemy attacks a lot more than usual. Am I the only one? It, it, it almost seems like prayer and fasting together have some sort of a, a power that the devil doesn't want. And so sure enough, it was Monday morning and I sat down in my living room and I don't know if you know this about me or maybe you do just by how this place is decorated and whatnot, but I am very big on atmosphere. I mean, I, I, if you've ever come to my house for a meeting, you might have noticed or you might have not, but there is piano music in the background at volume one. So it's very distinct. You kind of hear it, but you don't really. And I make sure to turn on a candle because like, like that's how I get the atmosphere going you know, for what God really wants to do. And so sure enough, as I was preparing for my prayer and fasting, I actually have a prayer playlist that's called Soaking in His Presence, kid you not. And I, play, I put it on all throughout my house because sometimes like I'll be walking around praying and I go upstairs and I pray and I wanted to be playing, playing upstairs and stuff. So I have the music playing. I turn on the candle. I open up my Bible, my big old leather back, the one that I like to study out of. And I'm sitting there and I'm praying and I'm diving in and God is like I just feel like God's in my living room and all of a sudden I get an email and on my work days I turn my phone off of silent and I leave it to kind of ring out and, and do what it needs to do because I need to tend to clients and I need to tend to work and so sure enough I got an email one of my biggest clients so I said okay God it's, it's embarrassing, but I said, God, we're going to have to pause on this a little bit. And I went up and I, I put out that fire. And then I came back and I was like, here we go, God. Here we go again. Here we go again. And I started praying and I started feeling his presence, soaking in his presence is actually playing in the background again. And all of a sudden, I get a phone call. Another pretty big client. And so I'm like, okay, okay, I got to take this. I got to take this. And so I put out that fire and then I come back into the living room and I sit back down and I say, okay, this is it. This is the one. And I do it again and I hear a ding on an iPhone. And I don't know about you, but a ding on my iPhone means almost instinctively I have to go and reach. And so sure enough, I instinctively go and reach and I'm like, no, not today, Satan, right? And I'm like, I will not, I'm not gonna do it I'm not going to do it. And so I start praying again and I start pressing in again. And all of a sudden I hear ding, 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 ding. Like it couldn't ding no more. And it just kept going off and off and off until I literally put my phone on silent, threw it behind the couch, put a pillow over it and said, God, this is my time with you. And the world can burn down. 
but this is my time with you. I, I feel like God did a lot through us in the prayer and fasting week, and God's been doing a lot through that Creatures of Habit series, but what's next, right? Like, here we are next week, and for some of you guys already, we've gone back to the same structure we claim to leave at the altar, and we claim that we were no longer going back to, and we claim that that habit was no longer going to be in our lives, and we've gone back to the ordinary and the mundane and the routine. And so today I want to talk a little bit about the power of intentionality. Far too often in our lives we can be doing something but not be doing anything at all. There are things that need to be tended to. There are things that we need to deal with in our life. I don't want you to just think that this is a message that you're going to sit down and not do absolutely anything and not tend to anything in the world because that's not the reality of life. But the reality of life is that we need to live on purpose for a purpose on purpose for a purpose. We need to be on purpose for his purpose. What does he want you to do? What does he want you to live your life as? What, what does his life mimic to us? What, what's the example? What do I need to follow? The title of today's message, if you're taking notes, is called this, The Power of Intentionality. The Power of Intentionality. Intentionality changes everything. It deepens our walk with God. It sharpens our focus. It, it strengthens our impact. And today, that's what I want to talk about. And the first thing I think is tremendously important for us to kind of dive into is this, this thought of make time count, not just pass. Make time count. Oh, for some of you and for me in my life, I've experienced that sometimes we'll just allow time to pass. You guys know what I'm saying, right? Like we will allow time to pass on our phones. We'll allow time to pass on the TV. We'll allow time, and there's no problem with those things. However, rather than allowing that time to be able to influence our lives, influence others, sharpen our focus, sharpen our purpose in him, we just simply allow it to pass. Psalms 90, 12 in the NIV says this, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach me, oh God. The psalmist is saying, teach me to number my days. You see, time is one of the most valuable gifts, yet it's also one of the easiest wasted. Uh, time is one of the most valuable gifts that we have as human. However, if we start to count our days, we'll realize that it's one of the easiest wasted. Don't believe me, pull out your phone, pull out screen time. Don't believe me. I, I think Netflix doesn't have a screen time because they don't want you to know. Pull out all the moments that you could have been doing something on purpose for his purpose, but you were just implicitly his purpose, but you were just doing life. And it's okay to do life. I'm not here to reprimand you. I'm not here to make you feel guilty. But if we were to truly count our days and count the moments that we are on here on earth, not fulfilling his purpose. Not fulfill, like the opportunities that we've been given at the supermarket and in our work. The purpose with intentionality of actually doing it. If we were to count those days, well, they wouldn't be as many as we think. You see, Psalms 90, 12 gives us a clear reminder that our days on earth are limited. You see, oftentimes, especially as, 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 as some, some people in this room are, are, are younger, we think time is finite. We, we think are infinite. We think, oh, we have all the time in the world. We, we have all our life ahead of us. But, but I was just talking to somebody this morning, and they were like, man, this year flew by. And I don't know about you, but I literally am remembering last Christmas service like it was yesterday. Time flew by. 
Time flew by, and, and, and the fear, or at least, I don't, I don't know if a fear, but, but a thing that should cause or spark some sort of emotion in your, or spark some sort of like, hey, let me tend to this situation, is that a year went by, and you might have not even fulfilled those New Year's resolutions, or you might have not even done what you sought out to do in the beginning of the year, because the year flew so, so fast. You see, time flies by. Time goes quick. In fact, when you're younger, time doesn't go as quick because, like, like they're, just, they're just young. They don't have a notion of time. In fact, like a day, like if a, if, if a child is five years old and, and they're living one year of their life, like, like they don't really know, like, how long is this or how long is that? That's why when you're on a road trip, a kid is always asking, how long, how long, how long, how long? And, and the dad will be like, five hours. And, like, ten minutes later, they're like, how long, you know, because they don't, they don't know. But, but for us, like, we know time. However, we neglect it all the time. You see, we, we often treat time like it has some sort of endless supply. We procrastinate on things and rush through the things that really matter, like deepening our relationship with God, knowing him and making him known. You see, living with intentionality about time doesn't mean this, I grew up thinking, and, and, and frankly, I'm still working through this in my life. I grew up thinking, well, if I'm not doing anything, well, then that's some sort of sin. Like, I got to be doing something. I mean, you should see me and Lindsay on days that we have free. Like, we're just like, like, like crazy. Like, we're sitting in the living room like, what are we going to do? Like, we need to be doing something. In fact, the other day, I had just, a, just like two Two hours in the middle of my work day, and I started writing an ebook for for like tech people to give to free to tech people so that we can you know give them free information. I don't know. I don't even really know why I was doing it. I was like, maybe it can work in our marketing or something like this. But I didn't have to do that. But but I was sitting there like I got to do something. And so for a lot of us, we feel like we just need to fill up our lives with busy activities and every minute with busy stuff. But it's not about that. It's, a, it's about pausing and asking ourselves, how, how can I use this moment to grow and to serve and to reflect God's love? You see, this mindset that we're trying to dive into is this shift in mindset between merely existing and truly living. We need to understand that you're not just here for no reason. You're not just here existing. You're not just like, like a combination of atoms that God like misplaced. And oh my gosh, I didn't know that he was there. I didn't know that she was there. No, 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 no. Like you were divinely created and intricately knitted in your mother's womb for a purpose. And like, what amazing, what, what, what more, like, like Pastor, or Pastor Kevin, Kevin was, was, was just up here and he was talking about us as pastors and he was like, he was like, wow, they invest their time, they invest this, they do that. Like, like the reason we do that is not anything other than how can I use the time that's been given to me to give back to the one who gave it all to me. Like, that's like the click in our minds that need to happen. How can I move forward and shift my mindset from, from just simply existing in this world to believing that I truly have a purpose? You see, a, a fulfilling life is not in the quantity of tasks, but in the quality of moments. You see, a lot of us think we, I, I've said this before, but a lot of us think, like, if I ask you, how are you doing? A lot of us think it's cool to just be like, oh, busy, busy, busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Life is busy. And, and, and like, that's good. Like, if you're really busy, good, good for you. But some people just say busy to look interesting. Some people say they, they're busy just to, just to feel good about themselves. I talked to somebody who doesn't have a job, doesn't have kids, and they're apparently super busy, you know? And they're like, I don't get it. So really, what we need to shift our focus on is not necessarily just filling up our calendars, but making the things that are on those calendars actually mean something. 
actually be moments, actually be opportunities, because every family member that you're with, every single coworker that you're with, every single coffee shop that you're in, every single Walmart thing that you do, if you get it delivered, if you go to the store, whatever you do, every single encounter with a human being can be a moment in history and in time that you have the opportunity to shift that person's life around with the good news that we were just singing about. That's why we're intentional. That's why we do what we do. We often fall into the trap of believing that this short term doesn't matter, that what I do tomorrow doesn't matter, what I do in the short term doesn't matter. As long as I have those long term plans, as long as I have the plan eventually to do those big things, but how many of you know that the little things and the little days culminate and build up to the greater purpose and the bigger things that we might be praying for, that we might be desiring that we feel called to be doing you see far too many times we're so focused on the big thing that God's promises or the big dreams or the the big company the big house having having the children having this having having that the retirement plan and all that we forget that the little mundane ordinary days can also be turned into moments and those moments can turn into momentum into pushing us into what God actually has Knowing how valuable time is, man. I didn't get it. I didn't get it for a long time. I thought, I have time. I have time. We have time. We have time here on a, but when we realize that, that really, like, we don't have that much time. <laughs> we don't have all that much time. If you look at the average person, like the, the average life expectancy in America and you look at how old we are today, even for some of you younger folk, we don't have a whole lot of time. And I, I think like if we understand the value of time, how we can guard it from being consumed and in this constant demand of life and the distractions of life, how can we be sure that we're focusing on what really matters? Th this is how. We focus on what matters, not what's immediate. This week, specifically, I learned that there's a lot of immediate things in family, in, in, in friends, with the church, with the company. I felt like I was running. I literally texted Lindsay this funny text, and I was like, I'm running around with my head cut off like a chicken with no, I don't even know what I said. It was this long little thing just to you know, make her laugh, honestly. Um, it was just a crazy week. And, and I thought to myself, well, God, there's a lot of things that are calling for my attention that are seemingly immediate, but how can I focus on what matters? Because if I were to show you my calendar today, the calendar looks like a rainbow. There's a million labels that I have for a million different things and the reason I do that is because if I don't do that and I, if I don't get organized and if I'm not intentional, what will happen is I'll try to fit everything in one day and fail to realize that that day has matters of its own that need to be tended to. Uh, Mar Matthew 6.33 puts it this way, but seek first. Can someone say first? first. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. You see, a lot of us have uh, misplaced that verse right there because a lot of us read it this way. But seek third, but seek fifth, but seek tenth, his kingdom and his righteousness. After I've done the things that I need to do with the kids, and after I've done the things that I need to do with the wife, and after I've done the things that I need to do with work, and after I've done with all the million little things in my life, then... I will seek his kingdom. Then I will seek his righteousness. But we fail to understand that at the end of the day, God doesn't fit in the equation. At the end of the day, when you filled your life with all those things first, 
all of a sudden you're just like, God, I'm, I'm just exhausted today. God, I can't seem to fit you in. It's already 11 p.m. and I don't know how I'm going to do it. And I'm, I can't do a devotional now because I start reading the Bible and I'm falling asleep. Like, I don't know how to do it. But if you were to shift it around and place him first, try it this week. I guarantee everything will fall into its place. I guarantee your schedule will align itself. You see, far too often we place them as second, as third, as fourth, as fifth, because we think, well, all these things need to be tended to first, but that's not the case. Intentionality is important because it allows you to redistribute things in your life and place them to their priority. And I don't know about you, but in my life, priority is God. Priority is, is, is what he's called me to do in that moment Focusing on what matters. You know, we live in a world of constant demands. Urgent text messages. Urgent emails. Urgent notification. Overflowing to-do lists. It's easy to get swept up in the chaos of life. It's easy to get swept up in what feels immediate. What feels pressing. But the real question we must confront ourselves with is, are we genuinely focused on what truly matters? Are we focused? You know, we did the whole week of fasting and prayer. Today you come here on a Sunday. Are you focused? Are you focused? Are you still seeking his kingdom first or was the altar just an emotion? Are you still seeking his kingdom first or was, was prayer and fasting just, just a moment in your life that doesn't change anything? Are you focused? Do you know what you're doing? Do you know what you're called to do? Are we genuinely focused? The truth is we often let the urgent drown out the treasure of the eternal. We often let the urgent drown out the treasure of the eternal. We often let the things of today, the notifications of today, the calendar, the routine, the to-do list, everything fill up our lives, failing to understand that the steps that I'm taking today, the decisions I'm taking today, the setting apart that I'm taking today, the commitment to seek him and to seek his kingdom first and to seek his righteousness first, the things that I'm doing today have have an eternal impact. The people I'm talking to today about Christ has an eternal impact. The people that I'm able to disciple today have an eternal impact. The relationships that I'm building today have an eternal impact. You see, the enemy wants to share with you and to show you that what you do today does not matter. But can I share with you that intentionality and everything that you do with your friends, with your families, and your marriages, with your relationships, whatever and wherever you're at is tremendously important. I've been in meetings where I'm having this important. I've been coffee with somebody and they're on their phone and I just want to grab their phone and chuck it across the place and tell them, you're with me now. Stop being with them. I've seen people on New Year's, they, they, we, we've been to Tennessee and we're, we're watching the, the ball drop and everybody's so in family, like our family has got this together because we've gone, it, gone through it. We're not perfect, but, but we're, we're with each other. When we're with each other, we're with each other. When I'm with my wife, I'm with my wife. When I'm with my sisters, I'm with my sisters. When I'm with my leaders, I'm, I'm with my leaders. And I see people on New Year's and the second the ball drops, they don't even say Happy New Year to the people next to them. They're just on FaceTime with someone over the world. And that's great. Text them, shoot them a message, whatever you need to do. But you're with people. Intentionality means everything. Can you imagine if I'm having coffee with my wife and I'm on FaceTime with my mom? Intentionality. Can you imagine that you're in the park with your kids either now or in the future and all they see you is on the phone with work? Intentionality matters. You think it doesn't matter. They're looking at you. Intentionality matters. We often allow the urgent to drown out the treasure of the eternal. The eternal impact, not only in heaven, but also the internal impact that we have with people, co-workers, friends, and family here on earth. God calls us to a different living. One that emphasizes intentionality over urgency. It's all about recognizing the importance of investing in our spiritual growth, nurturing our relationships, and fulfilling God's given purpose. Life is full of temporary distractions. 
things that you're so focused on, but if this thing comes in my life, and, I, and, and you know the enemy knows the things that are going to move you, right? The enemy knows the things that are going to move you. The enemy would never present itself in a time of prayer and fasting with, with, an, with, with, with an issue with a neighbor or something. I'd open up the door and I'd be like, hey, yeah, I'm actually doing something. Let's have a conversation later. Okay. But with work, though, with work, it's different. The enemy will present it for me to work because I'm a man and I feel like I need to provide and I don't want to lose my biggest client. So what am I going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there. and I'm going to tend to what I need to tend to. For you, it might be different. For you, it might be family for you, it might be finances. For you, it might be your kids. For you, it might be whatever you can fill in the blank with. Intentionality is everything. Research shows that people check their phones an average of 96 times a day. For, for some of the people that are, are a little bit more seasoned in this place today, it might be a little bit less. For, a little, for, for some of you guys that, that are, are young, these guys in the front, um, they're probably like three times as, as you and me. He's on his phone right now, probably taking notes, but, but he's on his phone, and we have like notepads. It's okay. 96 times a day, which equates to over four hours in a day. I did a little research. Four hours a day, 365 days a year. How much is that? A hundred uh, 1,460 hours. I tell you, the reason I put this on the board was because I knew I wouldn't be able to remember it. So what does it say? That 1,460 hours times 60 years. Let's just say you weren't born with a phone. Some of these guys were born with a phone. The second you see these little babies at, at Chili's or wherever you go to eat, and they got these iPads bigger than their heads right here. They got a, they got a plasma. I, I told, I saw a kid the other day with a tablet. I don't know what it was. It was the iPad 29 Deluxe, whatever they call it. And, and the iPad was actually bigger than my first TV. Kid you not, my first TV was a little, little guy like that. My dad bought it at Best Buy. Um, I went with him to get it. Um, but yeah, 1,460 hours times 60 years, assuming you got your phone later on in life. That's just an average of 87,600 hours. What does that equate to? That is eight, or 87,600 hours divided by 24 hours a day. It's 3,650 days. And listen to this. Don't give me the next one just yet. Just kidding. Give me 10 years. That's, this was great. We practiced this. Um, it equates to 10 years of your life. And the reason I'm, the reason I'm saying this, I, I said to wait, but, but they're just so quick. Thank you, tech team. 10 years. Those are 10 years of 24 hours. But that's not livable hours, right? Because we sleep, what? God willing, eight hours a day. Please tell me eight. So in livable hours, that'd be more than 20 years of our lives. What does that mean for me? Because I promise if you look at my screen time, it's not much better. What does that mean for me? What does that mean for you? It means that for 10 years of our lives, we've justified not being intentional with people and have given space for something that was meant to be a tool to now control our lives. Something that was meant to help us to now actually deteriorate the moments, the times. And I think for a lot of us today, this is only scratching the surface of obviously the, the, big, the big elephant in the room phones but I also think that for us, we need to be in this constant reminder, as, uh, is, is this thing, is this moment being fruitful? Are these things that I'm doing today allowing me to grow? Are these moments that I'm living, this moment right here, right now, with this person, am I able to truly enjoy this moment? Am I able to intentionally pour into this person, love on this person, grow with this person, or is it just a checklist off my list? 
You see, focus isn't just saying yes to what matters. It's also saying no to the distractions of our lives. It's saying no and keeping our eyes on God's purpose. So let me ask you, what what would it look like if you began to prioritize God's kingdom in your daily life? How, How would it transform the way that you approach your time, your decisions, your relationships? Because as we commit to this intentional focus, we can experience a profound shift and embrace the call to live on purpose, not on accident. You need to embrace that call. You need to embrace the call of living on purpose, not by accident. Each and every person in this room today was created on purpose for a purpose. I don't care what your mama told you. I don't care what your daddy told you. I don't care if they planned you. I don't care if they didn't. You were created on purpose for a purpose. You see, man has plans, but God has greater ones. And so when we come into this recognition and we come into this reality of I am here on purpose for a purpose, I have something. God, God, you've you've given me something. Colossians 3, 23, and the NIV says it this way. Whatever you do, Everything that you do, put your work there, put your life there, put your friends there, put your families there, put your, put your pickleball buddies there, put your tennis buddies there, put your soccer buddies there. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. It's easy to drift through life, allowing the currents of daily responsibilities and distractions to carry us along. Yet God calls us to a higher standard, to live intentionally, to live on purpose. You see, we as Christians, we don't need to settle for just good enough. And and we need to strive to live, to glorify him in everything that we do. So many people are just passing along and, oh, it's just good enough. Oh, that's good enough. Oh, that's good enough in my work. Oh, that's good enough for my family. Oh, that's good enough in my relationship. But good enough. Wait, there's a commercial. What, what's the commercial? Good, just that good, not that good. I forget what the commercial is. Some, somebody knows it, I, I hope. Somebody will tell. Not just okay is not okay. Isn't that an insurance company? Probably is. Just okay is not okay. I should have looked it up. Anyways, as Christians, your bosses should love having you there. As Christians, when you enter into a room, your work ethic, not even what you believe in, just just your work ethic, the way that you live life, the way that you do life, they they should look at you and be like, I don't care what they believe in. They, They are loving on people. They have grace. They have mercy. They're compassionate. They're phenomenal listeners. It doesn't matter what religion it is. They're they're just amazing people to have in the workplace. That's what they should feel. That's what it should be. Because we're not serving them. We're serving God. I'm not serving the people that I encounter every single day. I'm serving God. And because of that, I'm pouring into them. You see, I'm living on purpose for his purpose. You see, when we change up our mindset of thinking, well, I'm too young. Well, I was talking to, to, to a gentleman the other day. He was telling me, Pastor, I'm, I'm 66 years old. I said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. There's people in the Bible that were having babies older than you. You know, like, it doesn't matter. For us to be in this position of thinking and knowing, God, you've made me on purpose. You you didn't only make me on purpose, you gave me a purpose. You gave me life. Every single, look, do it with me. I'm breathing. I have breath in my lungs. In this moment, there's blood going throughout my body. My brain is functioning. You're listening. It is a miracle of life. And guess what? It's on purpose. It's on purpose. You were created for a purpose. 
living with, with intentionality transforms the mundane into a mission. Living with intentionality and purpose transforms that coffee into a mission. Living with intentionality transforms that regular Monday morning at work into a mission. Living with intentionality means now I go to the grocery store and yeah, I'm doing what I need to do, but now I have a mission. Who can I talk to Christ to? How can I, how can I spread the love of Christ? How can I look at some, the other day we were walking at Publix and this one lady, she, she was the cashier and I always try like, like I'm on a mission, right? Like I'm trying to be on a mission. And so one of the things when we were dating, she said, uh, Lindsay said she loved him out with me, was I try to talk with anybody. Like, like, I'll, I'll, like if, if, if we're going and I, there's a cashier or whatever, I try to make sure, like, let's have a conversation. And so sure enough, there was this lady, and, and we were at Publix the other day getting, uh, getting ice cream, Halo Top, so don't, you know, it was it's skinny ice cream. And so sure enough, uh, I said hi to the lady, or she said, good afternoon or whatever, and I said, hey, good afternoon, how are you doing today? And, and like instinctively, she just said, have a, have a good day. And I was like, you didn't answer my question. But you know why she said that? Because there's been thousands of people that have passed by her every single day. And they've said, how are you doing? And she probably once or twice or ten times said, oh, I'm actually having a good day. And they just kept walking. Because they didn't care about her day. They just said that instinctively. And so this lady who looked a little older to me, it, it saddened me. And I didn't say anything. But, but as I was reading my message, I read it on Saturdays and I read it on Sundays just so it's fresh in my brain. And to, 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 to just be in tune with what God wants to see. I, I, last night in my heart, I was just like, this lady... She's probably had thousands of people pass by her. And now her instinct is, how are you doing? Have a good day. How are you doing? Have a good day. It doesn't matter what you say in between. I know you don't care. It doesn't matter what you say in between. I, I know you're busy. I know you're shopping. But what would, what would happen if we would just stop? No, I, I do care about your life. I do care to know if you know Jesus. I do care to know if you're having a good day, if you're having a bad day, if I can pray for you. That's what it's about. It's about intentionality in everything that we do. It's about intentionally loving others because Christ loved me first. It's about intentionally speaking the name of Jesus everywhere I go. It's about intentionally giving grace even though it's not deserved. It's about intentionally making time in our schedules to meet with people. It's about intentionally going to places, going to the hospital, going to help your friend move, going to do... Because guess what? Those intentional moments have an eternal impact. Those intentional moments have an eternal impact impact can we stand on up as we close when we make a conscious effort to connect with others we reflect God's love and create environments where light can shine through as we get into our our worship I want to challenge you to think about this as we worship, think about this. Are you living by default or are you living by design? Are you living by default? By default means okay, I'm just here. I'm just going through school. I'm just going through middle school. I'm just going through high school. I'm just going through college. I'm just going through work. I'm just going through. I'm just waiting for retirement. I'm just waiting for this. I'm just, I'm just waiting to pass away so that I can be in heaven with God. That's all I'm doing. Or are you living by design? Because if you're living by design, well, you were designed to spread his name. You were designed to love others. You were designed to magnify. 
You were designed to glorify his name. You were designed to do so much more than you're probably doing right now. You were designed, you were made, you were intricately created in your mother's work. Are, 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 you, are you living by default or are you living by design? Because I promise if you're living by design, this will cause you to leave this place today and change some things in your life. To change some things so that we can live intentionally for God and live intentionally loving on others. Can I pray for us this morning, Lord Jesus? I pray that we would be a generation, a group, a church, a place that seeks to live intentionally. We're not living by default, we're living by design. We're not living just because. We're not living just waiting to go to heaven. We're living with the mission of turning the mundane into our mission. We're living with that purpose of just taking my ordinary life, of taking our ordinary life and being able to speak Jesus into the nooks and crannies, into the beautiful and into the ugly, into the impoverished and into the rich, into every single person in Jupiter, God, and beyond. Because that's what you wanted us to do. Oh, Jesus, when we look at your life, you had a purpose, but you weren't idle. You weren't hurried, but you weren't idle. You were moving, and in your three years of ministry, Jesus, you did so much because you understood that you needed to do what the Father has called you to do. And so you formed genuine relationships with the people around you, with your disciples. You had dinners with people that people would never expect you to have dinners with. Now, Father, I pray that today that the character and the life of Jesus Christ would be the one that we want to model, turning the mundane into our mission and being able to speak Jesus into everywhere we go. Thank you, Father. Oh, mm -hmm.
living by default or by design? Are we living to magnify and glorify the Most High? Are we living intentionally with the purpose to glorify Him and magnify Him and make Him known? You were designed and created on purpose for His purpose. Let's start to live that way. Lord Jesus, we're thankful for you. We're thankful that you designed us. And I pray, Lord, that as we leave this place today, that you would be at the center of it all, the center of my life, the center of everywhere I go, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would leave here and that this message would stick with us so that we can go into all of the nations, into all of the cities, Lord, and be able to magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody says, Amen and Amen. Come to church, we love you. We hope you have a wonderful week. God bless. God bless you.